What's up, gang? Welcome to The Greatness Machine. I'm your host, Darius from Shaz Day. I'm so pumped to have you here with me. Now, listen, The Greatness Machine, we're about two things. Number one, people who live in their passions. And number two, those who are creating greatness in the world and doing both of these things despite the odds against them. Each episode, we're going to feature interviews with game changers, business leaders, you know, telling us their origin stories, what made them tick, what got them to where they are now. Why? So it can help you step into your greatness within your life, your business, and your career. Occasionally, you might hear a few solo episodes from myself, moi, as I say, as I leverage my 20 years of entrepreneurship as a CEO and founder to help you grow and level up in your journey to scale your life and your business. So come be a fly on the wall, enjoy the conversation, and I'm stoked to have you here with me. Guys, welcome to today's episode of The Greatest Machine. I'm your host, Darius Machado. And boy, we have a special guest. My man, Clay Martin, is in the house. What's up, brother? Hey, how you doing, man? Oh, man. Doing well. Second time's a charm, char, a charm baby. <laughs> right, right, right. I, I'm also going to pre-po this with, uh, I'm going to try really hard to be an awesome guest today, but I'm also on like my fifth day of switching back to a carnivore diet. So uh, it's it's been interesting. Oh. Wait, wait. So, car- <laughs> carnivore is in like, like, like you're like, uh, what's the guy's name? The fucking liver king? Are you just, just doing just straight organs? <laughs> I'm gonna have to get a lot more steroids for me to be the liver king. But <laughs> yeah, no, that's essentially uh, it. Yeah, I know it's crazy. Uh, actually, you got to meet over on a Kyle Kingsbury show the liver, or the, excuse me, the uh, the carnivore doc one time. But uh, yeah, carnivore's cool, but it's uh, it is a pain in the ass to switch to. It is uh, painful. Wait, wait, wait. So, so, hey, audience, um, we're going to start talking about carnivore shit for a few minutes. So we'll come back to like the normal pleasantries in a moment. Um, <laughs> and so, so, so if, if you don't like this, you can go listen to series radio or something. Um, but so carnivore diet, I've done like keto and Atkins and shit right. like that. Yeah. Is that yeah. the same thing? Like I'm just eating bacon and oh. steaks and stuff. Well, basically, okay. all right, but but with keto, you can still have like vegetables. In fact, you're encouraged to have like vegetables and fruits and other, you know, pussy foods. Oh, um, yeah. With with, with that, with and, you can do that with keto, keto now. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. With keto, oh, yeah, yeah, you're certain. You're saying with keto, have. you can do that. Yeah, yeah. No, okay. carnivore is straight uh, meats only, and I actually cheated a little bit because I also include <laughs> cheeses, which some hardcore uh, carnivore dudes won't. But uh, it is crazy Why? the results. Why, why not? If I, Jesus. dude, if I, if I, yeah, if I fucking was living on a goddamn ranch, or I would sit there and suckle right. on the, yeah. the teeth you know, of the cow. bison milk and, and shit. Yeah, yeah, di- dinosaur milk or some shit. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's just, a, it's like a purity thing. Uh, I, I use cheeses and shit, though, but I, dude, it is crazy. Uh, when I did this the first time, which was two summers ago, I, dude, I dropped like 30 pounds in three months. It was crazy. And were you just like, and let me just say this, like whoever, who, 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 what did you say the rules? Like to the, who, who the fuck makes those rules up? Number one, some, some doc. So I'm going to take a step <laughs> right, back. That, I, I'm, li- the, I'm, li- I'm listening. The meat doc. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I'm going to say this is the meat doc. Um, like, so I'm, I'm reading the, um, Elon Musk book by, by, uh, Walter, uh, Isaacson. Have you, have you read this yeah. book? No, I haven't. The, his newest book. Okay. <laughs> Everyone should read <laughs> the Elon Musk book. Now, everyone knows I have a thing with Elon Musk. I met him in real life. I wish I had read that book before I met him. I would have, I, I, first of all, when you meet Elon Musk, I met him, his brother, the, the, star, the people that started Westworld, and my buddy, who was the agent for the people that started Westworld. And I'm sitting in a, in a small little group, like, sit, like, a, like, you're, like you're at a cocktail party, but we were out in the backstage of the Moody Theater at South By. And it's like, I'm standing right next to Elon Musk. And he, A, he was tall, he was super tall. Like he had cowboy boots on, but I'm tall. I'm six feet tall. He was at least five inches taller than me with cowboy boots on. So he's probably six, three, which you don't, he, he's like, has that like hunched over back nerd thing going on. Right, so right, you right, kind of right. just assume he's not tall. He's right. fucking tall. His brother's super tall too. These tall ass South African dudes. And, um, and dude, he like doesn't talk. He got this weird look in his eyes. I call it serial killer eyes. Um, right. But dude, no, nah, he just uh, he just has Aspergers, right? That's the that's the real deal. <laughs> As all good but, tech geniuses do, yeah, totally get it. Uh, yeah, yeah, dude, he's like, like, yeah, like just li- just live in the dream Asperger style, richest guy on earth. And so, <laughs> I'm sitting here, I'm sitting here, like, kind of like I, I realize I'm like they all know that I know who they are, and I don't know, and they don't know who the fuck I am. And so I'm like, well, how do I talk to these dudes? I was like, first of all, you, you totally throw out the window. Hey, my name is Darius. What's your name? He's like, uh, you know my name. <laughs> yeah. Like, totally, you know my name, man. Like, I'm Elon Musk. And, and, and you know everyone else around here, too, because we were on stage like 15 minutes ago. 
<laughs> and but dude, it's one of the uh, like I swear to God, I like him so much more now that I'm I'm almost done with this book. Like this guy is such a. First of all, I think he's completely mentally. <laughs> I think he's completely uh, mentally ill. <laughs> like I'm, I'm. I mean, who else buys Twitter for forty billion dollars so they can shit talk people at at will? I mean, totally. totally dude, 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 it, dude, I'm telling you, I lo- I like his. He has, I think he has like what's the amygdala, the the part of the brain that controls risk. I think he ha- doesn't even have that. He's it's, like it's the dude cool. from. He literally, he's the guy from Free Soul. Have you ever seen watch movie Free Soul? The guy that climbs the front, the face of the Yosemite. You yeah, ever seen this yeah, documentary? Yeah. yeah. The dude, he free, he free climbs without a rope up the face of like the toughest right. mountain with like, it's like a, a inverted vert. Right. And right. the guy, like they tested his brain and he didn't have the chemical that says you're going to die. So he had like a, his brain chemistry was different. I was like, I'm pretty sure Elon Musk has the same shit. He just does it with business. Right. right. And, <laughs> but, but anyway, I'm, I, I digress. The, the point I was going to make was he, every, in his companies, there are no such things as rules or regulations or laws. The only laws that they're allowed, they call it first, first rules principles, and it's based on physics. And they're like, the only rules we will agree with are the laws of physics. Anything else is man-made and it's complete bullshit and, we, and you're allowed to challenge it, right? So, so they don't believe in regulation. They, be, they don't believe in any regulations. They're like, that's man-made. It's not a law of physics, so it doesn't count. And they sit there and break all these laws. They break all these rules. That's how he launched all these companies by literally like th- totally disregarding every law. <laughs> and I was like, so there's a part of me that's like, kind of respect the guy. Yeah, no, <laughs> like, no, that's fucking, that's awesome. That's ballsy. Right? Like, it's, it's obviously working for him too. Or he's not like a hobo next to McDonald's. Like it's working. Dude, it, you can't argue with, hey, scoreboard, right? Um, right. Yeah, so, so, so that's, that's a long winded way of me saying, Dude, the, the 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 organ the the freaking uh, carnivore doc like just made that shit up. You should be allowed to drink milk, right? right. Like, you go. <laughs> and, and, and therefore, you should be able to drink milk, okay, and cheese. <laughs> strong strong bones, strong bones. God damn it, yeah, it, exactly. So 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 hey, so how's it? How many? You're five days in. Was this like post Thanksgiving? You're like, all right, just fucking devouring yeah. pies and shit, and you're like, all right, I'm oh, going street. I'm not even going oh. keto. I'm going carnivore. Like, like way worse than that. I was on the road for like 30 straight days. Uh, I slept in my own bed like two nights out of the last month since the uh, war started in Israel. I uh, just because I got you know, shit going on. And then, uh, yeah, I came home and I was like, I got fast food, like all this just garbage. I was like, I got to clean this up. Like there's only one way. You has got to go hardcore the other way as hard as you can. And uh, yeah, it's painful, but it's, it's what you got to do. So, dude, I will tell you this. Like there's a couple times in my life I've done. I, so I'm old school keto. I'm like Dr. Atkins keto, like when oh wow, South when, Beach uh, diet, old school, yeah, like 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 cheese and bacon and like burgers and steaks, and that was all you ate. Yeah, keto, like there was no vegetables. Oh wow! And so I okay. did. I so I was 21. This is two or 22, 2000, the year 2000. And I did it because I've I've always been able to gain weight really easily, and um, <laughs> I did 14 straight weeks where I did not have one gram of carbohydrates. I was, dude. I was frying bacon, or I was frying cheese, and turning it into taco <laughs> shells. <laughs> this is way before. So there was, dude. The internet was new. Like there was none of this shit on the internet. I was just experimenting. My buddies were like, "What the fuck are you doing?" And I'm like, "I'm frying cheese. <laughs> it, it, it crystallizes into like a cracker." <laughs> so, dude, I, I, I'm old school, man. I, 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 I will tell you, when I do that diet, I'm fine. Like, I love yeah. it. Like my body, it, my body reacts very positively to it. It, it takes me about a week to switch over. Once I do, I'll feel great. Energy will go up, all the stuff. Uh, but yeah, that that for me, it's like a five six day switch over, and it is, uh, it's it's like yeah. unpredictable. So like just like an hour ago, I was just totally dragging ass. I had I had like two coffees and a fucking Gatorade Zero because it has no carbohydrates or sugar, and I, I feel better now. But yeah, it was a uh, it was a rough one. I was like, oh shit, this is not the time of night for this. Yeah, just well, I'll I'll let your endorphins kick in with some laughter, and and we'll uh we'll fix that shit. Um, nice. but sauce, dude, sausage wrapped in cheese, come on, like forget oh, about yeah. it. Yeah, dude, dude, <laughs> I had a I had a bread free sandwich for lunch today. It was awesome. It was like you know this many cold cuts with nothing but cheese on the outside. It was great. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, like like bro, I used to go to Carl's Jr. and just order like like bacon Western cheeseburgers without any without the the onion rings without the bread, and I would stack like five of them up. <laughs> 
I was like, I was like, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I'm gonna eat whatever I want right now. <laughs> my mom's. I went to lettuce. I, I do a little bit of lettuce because lettuce is like water essentially. Yeah. Um I do. I wrap shit in lettuce. Like that was like my one. But blue, blue cheese. I, man, if I, I, my wife. I, I lost like twenty to thirty pounds, and then I'd lose no. Because the one thing for me is like everyone else, they lose their appetite when they do. The, like you know, they're yeah. going to ketosis. And yeah. they have no appetite. And right. I'm like the one dude that still has an appetite. <laughs> so, <laughs> I totally so, like, I, so like my caloric intake doesn't drop. It's like stays pretty <laughs> high. I, I just start packing on muscle, you know? And, and like, so th- that, that's like the, the one side effect. So uh, for me, it just doesn't work because I, I, my appetite's naturally high. But man, well, I'm, I'll, I'll try to make it as painless as possible for the next hour. So, um, man, let's do, a, let's take a step back. We're now, uh, 10 minutes in the show. I hope you, I hope listeners enjoyed the banter just now. I did that. And I, it sounds like Clay did. Um, yeah. so I'm going to do a little bit of a, uh, I'm going to do a, a restart here and then we'll, we'll, cause I want the people to know they're Darius like clowning around with right now. Um, so you guys, Clay, uh, first of all, welcome to the greatness machine. I'm your host, Darius Mashad's Day, and I'm really pumped. We have Clay Martin here. This is the second time. Clay came on the show a few weeks ago, and we had tech issues, so we had to redo it. Um, but I know Clay. I met Clay, and I, and I'm, I would be remiss to not tell the story of the day I met Clay. So, because it's a, like, if you think the Elon Musk story was interesting, the me meeting Clay story is way more fun. Um, so, so former guest on the show, friend of mine, Tucker Max, uh, I, I said, hey, man, I got some CEOs coming to town. Um, I come when we come down to your ranch it's got a ranch down dripping springs like 50 acres got cows and goats and all this crazy shit he's doing this whole like 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 homesteading thing and i got a bunch of my ceo buddies coming to town i said hey i want to i want to go down and check out uh tucker's place and so he's like yeah man fuck yeah let's do it so um and and dude tucker's just a total animal like like you go in his garage he's got like he's got like freezers filled with like rice and meat and guns he's got like fifty thousand rounds he's got like night he's got like mats down so he could practice his knifing of people <laughs> like like he's got he's getting ready for like if anyone messes with him and so he says to me he goes well hey man i got this like really interesting opportunity like um i have a guy coming down from oklahoma who's like a former green beret who uh you know well first of all he has a gun range there i said hey can we shoot guns he said yeah and then he comes back and says hey i got something even better for you I have a guy coming down here who is a former Green Beret who's going to train me. And are you guys interested in being trained on how to shoot handguns? So I was like, oh, hell yeah, let's do that. And so we get there and I meet Clay. And Clay is, uh, and I'll, I'll give you a form bio in a second, but the Clay is down there teaching a bunch of these homesteaders how to like defend their, themselves and u- use weapons responsibly and you know become better marksmen and whatnot. And uh, to do so in a more tactical setting. So they're doing tactical training. They're doing all this sort of stuff. But he's just teaching us how to use guns. And um, and so we're, we're there. And, dude, we're having the best time ever. I mean, like, the, and most of these guys have barely ever shot a gun before. I've, I've, I've done it a few times. But um, we, we're shooting handguns and uh, having a great time using scopes. Uh, I can't remember the name. Of, I had a German black handgun. Do you remember the name of it? Oh, it was, it was my favorite gun. H&K. Oh, mm. oh, it was H and K. I I told my buddy Jeff Shocks, another former guest on the show. He and I were. I'm like, this is my girlfriend. We I, we both said those that, that handgun was our girlfriend at the end we, of the, the day. We referred to it as the Teutonic <laughs> Killing Machine. But yes, oh, you, t- s- 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 potato, potato, Teutonic Killing Machine <laughs> to some gr- girlfriend to me. Like Wait, I, makes, I called, I, I called the gun my girlfriend. I'm like, this is my girlfriend. <laughs> I love her. <laughs> And I'm not a gun person. Like, I'm not like an NRA dude. Like, I, I appreciate that people like guns, but I'm not like, you know, like I'm kind of like, they're fun to shoot every now and again, but I, I don't like have any or anything like that. Um, and so, but for me to leave that day, and I, I told my wife, I'm like, man, I think I want to buy one of these. She's like, why? And I'm like, it's my girlfriend, you know? <laughs> and my wife's like, what the fuck are you talking about? But, you know, like at this point in my, I've been with my wife 22 years. Like nothing surprises her. She, she knows what she's married to. Um, and so anyway, we're hanging out there and all of a sudden this dude walks on the property who's like drunk. <laughs> Basically he's like, b- like fucked up carrying an AR <laughs> and, and it's like and, two o'clock and, in the afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like, it's like, I don't even think it was that late, bro. I think it was like before lunch because he came on, he had lunch with us. So no, oh, I think shit, it was like right. 11 oh, AM. God. It was yeah. Yeah, oh, no, we started early. This is like, dude, he had just watched like 
Hoda on like Good Morning America <laughs> decided to to cruise over to Tucker's with his AR. <laughs> now having an AR, no big deal. Some people are you know says, calls you know says those are weapons of you know mass destruction or you know those are war weapons. Uh, again, for me, as long as you're trained, I don't care what kind of gun you have. Um, but <laughs> the dude's drunk. <laughs> okay, so I'm setting the stage. Eight CEOs, Tucker Max, Green Beret, trainer of weaponry. Amazing situation on a homestead ranch. In comes a drunk dude with an AR at 11 a.m. <laughs> like, weird, right? <laughs> and, and so the first thing I noticed is you said something to him. Clay said something to him around him where he's pointing his scope, his, like, muzzle of the gun. Because he's, like, putting yeah. it in the line of fire of people, right? Now, and now I don't think it was loaded. I don't believe it was at that point. It but, was, but it was never really broken, which is why he had it over there. But it was, oh. uh, we had not gotten through this of the uh, mumbly talk yet. Yeah, we didn't know he was weird right. and fucked up. Like, like it was just some random dude carrying his broken gun. I think maybe he wanted to see if you guys could help fix it. But, but I, I take, I look at my buddy Jeff and, and I swear to God, I was like, I think the odds of us dying just went up exponentially. <laughs> Like, like, so I asked Clay the first time he was on the show, I said, Hey, what do you think the odds are that that dude would have shot us? And, and, uh, and Clay said 10%. <laughs> Maybe I said 10%. I don't know. I, I, um, I think probably, yeah, pr- probably like 10% on purpose, like 30, 40% on accident. If your shit worked, like it was not, it was not good. I didn't feel happy about it. Now look, like it, like if you have a 10% chance of most stuff, like, yeah, you know, like no biggie. 10% chance of getting shot yeah, when you're before, not, before lunch. Like, yeah, it's not, that, it's not good. That, that, feels, that feels uncomfortable. It's kind of yeah. like if there was a 10-chamber gun and you put one bullet in and spun it and said, anyone want to play Russian roulette? It's that. Right. You'd be like, fuck, fuck no, dude. I'm not playing that. Right. That's, that's how I felt, right? I felt really unsafe. Yeah. So, so he – and he was hammered. That was the other thing. Like him being hammered and well, waving the gun around. Good. Yeah, it, it never, was yeah, never good. yeah. You don't drink and drive, and don't don't carry ARs around and dr- and and be drunk. Like 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 right. those are like simple rules of life. Like if if Elon has the laws of physics, that's a law of life. Like right, don't no, do don't do sense. that. Right. right. So we we go inside Tucker's for lunch. And oh shit! Oh no! This no, 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 and, no, no, and no, I bought no, I bought barbie. Yeah, it's the best part of the whole story. I buy barbecue for, for a, a shit ton of barbecue. So we got a bunch of barbecue that, that, that someone picked up for us. <laughs> and then he basically makes some, starts talking. Non- I mean, dude, the guy's drunk talking nonsense. So, so first of all, it's not like we're like 23 year old kids and some drunk dude comes over is talking nonsense. Like we've all lived, like most people have lived, lived through that. But by the way, is that a knife in your hand? Oh, that's my, uh, this is my uh, fidget toy. It's a trainer. Yeah. So it's oh, red. So it's, it's, uh, it's, it's inert. Uh, oh, that's all. I, I was hoping it was like a real knife. I'm like, only uh, only Clay would have like a killing knife in his hand while we're just chatting. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, there's one on the desk, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's neither here nor there. Um, right. So we're we're sitting there, and he's just it's like, you know, when you're at a bar and some random dude just being loud, like spouting nonsense, and you're like, shut the fuck up. It was like one of those, but we weren't at a bar, and we were eating lunch, and the guy's doing the exact same thing. And suddenly he busts out that some lake in the middle of Texas is the largest lake in North America. And, and now I'm sitting next to my buddy, Jeff Shocks, who grew up in, in, in Troy, Michigan. <laughs> and I give him a look and, and I'm like, isn't the largest lake in North America in Michigan? <laughs> like, they're called the Great Lakes. <laughs> and and, and now, now he's usually a pretty soft-spoken dude, right? Like he's like introvert, like very like chill. And he just starts hammering the dude. He's like, I'm pretty sure the largest lakes in, in, in Michigan. It's like Lake Erie. <laughs> right, right. And the guy's like, it's one of the other four. Like, pick one. Yeah. Yeah. They're called the Great Lakes. <laughs> like, they're not called like the Medium Lakes. They're called the Great Lakes. Like, if you've ever gone, they look like, it looks like you're standing on the, on the edge of the fucking Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> right. Know? They're huge. And this dude's trying to say it was in Texas. So, anyway... We got oh, past that moment. We ended up going having the best sushi dinner. It was fucking oh, insane. So good. It was at so Sushi good. Bar ATX in San Francisco. We bought the place out. And I strategically placed Clay next to me because I was like, oh, man, I'm going to chat, chat Clay up for the night. And we talked. I mean, it was, I had so much fun with you, man. And I was like, man, I want to get to know this guy more. So here we are, 19 minutes in the show. And uh, that's, how I got to, that's how I met Clay Martin. <laughs> <laughs> that was an awesome time. And we, 
If you guys come back, we got to go back to that same sushi place. That was so oh. good. Oh my god, that was Su- that was one of those places oh. that like breaks your heart and like ruins sushi for the rest of your life everywhere else. Like we're gonna have this bullshit. Totally. Yeah, yeah. Su- sushi bar ATX. It, it literally it, it's 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 pricey, but but it was damn good, and I highly recommend it. So um, I'm gonna do your formal bio clay, and then I'd love for us to like. Talk about some of the nonsense that's sure. happening in this world today. Awesome. So, uh, you guys, Clay Martin, uh, it, his company is De- Defiance Training Group, and uh, he is a weapon advisor and novelist. He's written a bunch of books. Uh, the best known book is the excuse me is the Concrete Jungle: A Green Braid's Guide to Urban Survival. And then, is Wrath of Wendigo one of your biggest books too? It is. It's catching up. Uh, yeah, so that one's newer, but it is catching up to the uh, to the others very quickly. <laughs> So five bucks. Those are all like what? Like they're not fiction, really. They're, they're kind of like nonfiction. And and yeah, and, the, uh, what, the, what would you characterize them as? The first two I wrote, they were definitely like fiction. That was just kind of like me get my toes in the water for uh, for writing. Uh, the next two, uh, Concrete Jungle and Prairie Fire, were both like survival books, and they were written around the time of like the uh, Summer of Love with the uh, you know the the George Floyd riots and all that, uh, and the election shenanigans of the next year and all that all that stuff. And then uh, Wrath of Wendigo is my last one. And it's uh, it's technically fiction, but uh, it it felt very much more like like a like a prescient kind of like vision for not necessarily like the path that things are going to go, but a path that they could go. If that makes any sense. Yeah. So I I, I jacked up. I didn't do your. My, I always fuck up on formal bio sometimes. So uh, former <laughs> you, you, you guys, I was like, where, where, I'm like, this is the wrong. This is written in the wrong section. So uh, Clay's a former United States Marine Corps infantryman, recon Marine, uh, scout sniper, uh, was also Army Special Forces Green Beret. 15 years of service. Uh, started a career as a weapons advisor and novelist. Talked about some of his books. And um, man, you're you're out there doing some cool stuff right now. Um, man, I love it. You know, we talked a little bit about this uh, on the last show that got you know messed up uh, with uh, the tech issues we had. So I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna press the rewind button uh, for listeners that couldn't have listened to the episode because we never aired it. Um, but man, you know, one of the questions I asked you was like, do you come from a long line of people that have served? And you know, or was this was this something you always knew you wanted to do? Like, tell us a little bit of your origin story. How did you decide to get into the military? Yeah, kind of. Uh... My family's always had one Spartan, uh, if you will. It's kind of weird, uh, but it's, it's been kind of true. Like, as far back as I know, which we're not one of those families that keeps, like, the, the family history back to the, you know, I don't know, the Revolutionary War. But as far as I know, it, it lineage-wise, we've always pretty much had one at a time. And, uh, yeah, so I did have other cousins that served, just generally not, like, in the same capacity that I did, uh, or not, not for as long of a time. Yeah, it actually was always something I wanted to do, uh, and that's one of those things that's it's kind of like inexplicably why. And I'm gonna actually I'm gonna blame '80s action movies. Man, Chuck Norris was the fucking coolest. And Dolph Lundgren, and in my era of kids, you either wanted to be a fighter pilot, uh, which means you had to be a dirty officer, or you wanted to be like a, you know Commando Steve. And so that's that was kind of how I wanted to, to do it. Yeah, so it's funny. I grew up. I, I think we're right around the same age. So GI Joe was like big deal. Oh yeah, right? GI Joe was cool. Ronald Reagan, dude. you know, endorsing GI Joes and shit. Like, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was a different time for sure. Dude, to GI Joe was the shit. I love that. Oh, I, so I always cool. wanted to be part of the Cobra. I was gonna say Cobra, Cobra Kai, son, but, but but you son of a bitch <laughs> wanted to be Cobra. I got him out of death. Dude, dude, Transformer. Listen, when we were kids. Every single, every single cartoon was about war. <laughs> right. Oh yeah. Hell yeah. It was, it was goddamn like, dirty Russians. Yeah. Uh, right. Dude, but but it was like they would do it like they 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 were smart. Yeah. Obviously, you had it. Some of it with GI Joe. Those that was outright like obvious. Right. Like two military forces fighting each other. Um. But you had to do Transformers. Was like the Decepticons right. versus the, the Autobot, uh, right. Autobots. Right. Like that's like. Code for like U.S. versus Russia, right? Right, um, right, right. You, you know, this isn't the Decepticons hard, hard. might as well have had a hammer and sickle. Yeah, it was ridiculous. Yeah, <laughs> totally, totally, dude. You had WWF. You had oh, freaking yeah. Rowdy Rowdy Piper. Bad guy. Yeah, Iron Sheik Persian, the Russians, yeah. right? Nikolai Volkov versus right. Hulk Hogan. The, I am a real American. <laughs> that was the fucking. That was his song, dude. That he come out and fight. Like the the Iron Sheik, right? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Whose move was the camel clutch? <laughs> it's now, so ridiculous. It's so bad when you look back at it. It's so bad. But yeah, dude, it, was like, it was everywhere. Everything. They had a cartoon of this. 
I go down the list, man. I was, I, I look, I was a kid of the eighties. And, and so like military to your point, Rambo, you know, oh, red yeah. dawn, you go down the yeah. list, right? They're like all the, these were like the action heroes. So, so military definitely was like, you know, that was like not out of the question. Right. And right. so, so, so you did your folks, were they pretty supportive of you joining the military? No, not at all. Actually. Yeah. They, <laughs> not in the fucking slightest. <laughs> I get not in the slightest. I uh, actually got disowned for a little bit uh, when I. Oh really? Up. No way. Yeah, they were really unhappy with that decision. Uh, I was in college. Uh, I was doing really well. I was in a top ten engineering school. Uh, you know, I graduated high school. I was like sixteen, and uh, you know, I was on this other career path. And uh, I just didn't want to fucking do it, man. I wanted to go like do some adventure shit because that I mean, pre-war too, man. That was it. Like the military stuff was. You might go fight for like 20 minutes, but mostly it was about like the adventure. You know, go to Cambodia or, you know, whatever kind of bullshit. Uh, and, I, you know, that's what I wanted. I wanted to do something else and see some things. And, uh, yeah, they were really not happy about that. But, uh, what, what year know, was that? Like 1996? 97, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so listen, I'm going to give some context for listeners who don't remember this, but like the previous war for that was Desert Storm, right? Oh, yeah, In which was like 1989. Right. Yeah, four days long, 1989. Like, uh, everybody, I, I, I graduated high school in 96. All my buddies went to the military, and they got there four years and came out, and they were, you know, they all made right. money. They're like, like, you would get sent off to, like, Japan or Germany. Right. And, like, Egypt, part, maybe, at the yeah, worst, yeah. Yeah, yeah it, it wasn't like, it was like nobody saw, saw fire, like, firefights. No, like, that was, like, no. that was not a thing until 9-11 happened and then right and then and then shit changed then it went right. from like you you then it was way different right and so right if you were a kid of the 90s or late 80s like dude there was like going to the there was no there had been wars since like vietnam war you know what well, i mean really for our age group man if you look all the way back to viet from vietnam to the war on terror every war that was like known about none of them lasted more than like three or four days that was always us like you know, kicking the shit out of some poor third world bastards that never had a fucking chance. Uh, and uh, there was some things going on like longer term, like Nicker, but they weren't really like wars. They were like, yeah, you know, you might get unlucky and, and step on a landmine, but probably not. Yeah, it, it was it wasn't like so I'm a kid of the 80s. Like I said, I'm old enough where like my buddy's uncles were in wheelchairs because they were Vietnam vets. Right. right? Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. so so you'd have to have been born in like the seventies ish, early eighties to like to for that to even been on your radar, you know? Right. Where you're right. like, yeah, his his uncle doesn't have his legs. He was in Nam, right. you know? Right. <laughs> like right. to hear that someone was in Nam was like a lot of my friends' dads were in Nam, you know? Yeah. Like, that it was, was a that huge was deal. Like, yeah. That was like totally normal, right? Um, right. But, you know, if you, if you were a young man in like the early seventies and late sixties, like there was a good chance you got drafted and went to Nam, you know? Right. And so when we were, by the time we were growing up, like, dude, like most people our age, were not going to war. And so you, so I get it. Like, and, and a lot of like my parents were anti, my brother talked about going to the military. My parents were like, they basically the same shit. They're yeah. like, we'll just, we'll disown you. Which I don't even know what that like means. Yeah, like I don't even know what that means. Cause they weren't going to give us anything anyway. <laughs> right. You know, <laughs> exactly right. I'm going to just like, give you nothing of the nothing I'm going to give you. <laughs> right. I'm going to be extra mad yeah. about it. Like, Oh shit. Yeah. But my parents made a big deal about it. So, um, so your folks weren't happy. You joined the you joined what Marines, right? Yeah, I joined the Marines first. Yeah, yeah. So I actually had to wait until I turned eighteen. Uh, so I'm you know in college riding out you know time trying trying to make it to <laughs> fucking eighteen. And then uh, yeah, I actually enlisted on my eighteenth birthday and like fuck it, I'm out of here. And uh, yeah, I enlisted into the uh, you know the late nineties, you know drawdown military where there was you know jack shit going on. And, uh, you know, I, I wasn't even really sure, like, I was like, yeah, I'll do like an enlistment, maybe two, but most guys back, that was it. You're going to do like six or eight years at the most, man. Nobody was in this shit for the, for the long haul or the career. Uh, cause that just seems like a weird thing to do. Yeah. Uh, you know, so it, it was funny. Like, um, I, uh, I'm going to ask you this again, even though I've asked sure. you before. So you said that you did come from a long line of Spartans. Did your, um, yeah. you said it was every other generation or it was like, like, you it was know, like, like one per generation. Yeah. One per generation. Excuse me. Yeah. How far back did, how, how far back does that go? Uh, as far as I, the only one that, or as far back as I can reach is, is world war two. Uh, my grandfather actually on my mother's side was, uh, he was in the scouts and raiders, which was a weird, uh, thing that was, it was a pre seal thing. 
So his name's at the uh, the UDT and uh, Seal uh, Museum, uh, but he never talked about that shit. I didn't find that out until like years and years later. And the only reason any of us found out about it is the next one of his sons uh, was an Air Force Special Operations guy in the late 70s when there actually was still some shit going on. There was some wild shit going on post Nam that's uh, almost completely unknown, uh, but it was happening. And uh, it was like 1996 or so when he was finally like, okay, you know what? Fuck it, man. I'm going to talk about this. I don't care how many disclosures I signed. And uh, so he started, you know, talking to me because I was kind of on this path. I was like, holy shit. Wait, so you were in high school and he and he starts busting out and telling you this stuff? Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, And, and, and was, was he doing fuck. it to, like, scare you or was he doing it because, like, like was he trying no, to, like, scare you straight? It, or was, it, or, it wasn't well, even really directed at me. It was more like, you know, it had been, like, 15 years or so by then. Uh, so it was more like him kind of like, I can't live this life of secrecy anymore. So, uh, you know, he's kind of, you know, letting some things out and I happen to be there. So of course I'm encouraging this behavior. Like, Oh really? Well, t- you know, tell me about, you know, this and that and that, you know, whatever kind of bullshit. And uh, yeah. And then rather than if he was trying to discourage me, it didn't work. Cause I was like, this sounds awesome. I want to do that. And then, you know, two years later, here we are. So, so when you went there, were you like, dude, I want to see, go see some shit? Or were you like, I just want to do some adventures? In your mind, you're like, dude, I can't wait to be in war? Or were you, or was, I mean, did that oh, really, thought, I mean, I mean, cause I got to assume a lot, a lot of people in the Marine Corps were like, you know, economically disadvantaged. That's true. They were like, that I, is true. this pays for college for me. That's you know, also like, true. I, I'm going to go for four years. Hopefully I don't see right. shit. Well, I mean, what the- was your perspective there? I would definitely say the Marine Corps of all the services, though, is probably more filled with the guys that are like, I hope we get our fucking war on for a minute. You know, uh, <laughs> you know it really is like like most of those dudes in that service at that time. That was where the guys like if you really wanted to fight, like that's where you wanted to go. And maybe you didn't want to go do like a year in Nam or some crazy shit like that. But you wanted to do your, you know, Grenada or Panama or, or Desert Storm or whatever kind of uh, a bullshit. And uh, yeah, you know, I was definitely that guy too. Like, you know, I wouldn't have chosen the jobs that I picked if I, if I wasn't. Uh, And it's kind of a weird, like, you know, young man mentality. Like, uh, you know, I want to know and I want to find out. And there's only, you know, one way to do that. So none of us really know what the fuck we're, we're getting into or what we're talking about when we, when we want that. But it is, it is still kind of one of those rite of passage things. And it's, it's a good thing we have those guys. Yeah, yeah. So, so the, you actually like kind of went to my next question, which is like, it's like I want to get my war on. Like, I, th- nobody even knows what that means until you no, do it. Fuck right? That's no. like, fuck no. Like, yeah, like, like no I get idea. it. Like, like, like saying, "Hey, I want to go get laid." Totally. Like hey, you're listen. Twelve, and you're looking at the bikini model on your wall. Like, I would do. St- I don't know what I would do, but stuff. To yeah, you don't know but what the fucking yeah. Biologically, you can you can appreciate why, why you're gonna why, why you're gonna enjoy that. And I guess arguably, there's a biological side to us that that likes that, that likes like you know I don't know not war necessarily, but like that warrior well, energy, right? Fighting dominance, uh, you know, control. It, all this shit is like hardwired into the psyche at some level for everybody, and for some people more than others. And uh, that is one of the ways that it, you know, some people have that and it, they take off in business. That's why they want to, they're using those like dominate other people mentality to, to succeed at business. Some people don't have to have that and still succeed at it, but it's, it is kind of part of, of everything that we do too. So did you see any dudes that were like, man, I just can't wait till we get our war on and then shit happened. Oh, and that dude, yeah. was, that dude was like shitting his pants oh, and like crying like a baby. <sighs> Or like freaking the fuck out, and you're like, he realized, what, like it was just like some dumbass statement, and then they realized what it really meant. Honestly, no, because I was already in an elite unit by then. Uh, uh, so yeah, I was, so so by the first time we went to war, I was in recon battalion. We were uh, full of guys that were like natural born killers and shit. Uh, there was there were maybe some guys that talked about a game and they delivered, but nobody was like you know a bitch about it. If we're being honest. So so at re- so so yeah. To your point, like maybe the infantry guys are not going to see that war, especially then. This is the late nineties; they weren't going to see right. it. But re- recon, you're out there. You're basically you're basically the advanced team for special forces. Is that like is that how well, how to think of recon? Back in those days, and this is exclusive to the Marine Corps. Uh, without going down a whole rabbit hole of fucking nonsense, uh, recon was the special forces of the Marine Corps back. Uh, they just, they came up yeah. with this fucking name, and that was it's recon and force recon. And prior to 
a bunch of other bullshit that happened with the formation of Marslock and some other shit. We were the Marine Corps Special Forces because we were uh, the Marine Corps itself excluded itself from SOCOM back in 1986 when it was formed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so sorry. So, I, and I, and I did know that actually. So, the, it's a the, weird thing, man. It's no big deal. Yeah, and we, and and maybe you want to talk a little about quickly about what happened, but but before we go there, so essentially, you, it, armies you have rangers, right? Right. And, and I'm and I'm simplifying this because obviously there's multiple sure, layers here. Armies have rangers. Right. Navy has the seals. Marines yep. had recon. Um, yep. Air Force. What's Air Force's special forces? Air Force has uh, CCTs. And PJs, and I also include uh, JTACs, Joint Tactical Air Controllers, in that, even if the Air Force doesn't. The Air Force is really confusing and weird, uh, and I don't feel bad about saying that because I have buddies that were in one of those. I'll be like, dude, what the fuck? And they're like, yeah, I, they changed all the time. We don't get it either. <laughs> so, so it's Yeah, so, so, so yeah, I, I, like it's funny. You would think that they would have theirs dialed in because everyone, because they get so much air. T- they get tons of, besides the SEALs, the yeah. Air Force gets the most amount of like love because oh, like Top Gun and shit like that, right? Right. Like, well, like those dudes also, think they're that's, hot shit. That service doesn't give a shit about its special operations because they care about their pilots. Uh, so right, it's kind of right, weird. right. Yeah, it is weird. It's a, it's also a little known fact, and I've said this before, and I would I would defend it to anyone. Like no bullshit. Like arguably pound for pound, the Air Force has the best special operations guys. I mean, they're fucking amazing. I, they're is it, fucking. Is, they're well, good. Do, you, do you think it's because Air Force Academy? Like you get this like. <sighs> Like, like, or what, why do you think that is? I, I honestly think it's just, they put so much care into their pipeline, uh, into their, their training thing. And they're also very small, so they can afford to be like hyper, hyper selective. Uh, and then also I think the air force does give them a, like an ass load of money. It, you know, if you're buying like fucking F 15s and shit, a couple of million, 20, 30 million for the boys, like that's buy some running shoes. Like, go. Just do your shit. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so the, they're, they're like they're, they're like t- the highest paid. It's like the highest paid athletes, right? It really is. <laughs> it's a lot like that. As well as I've always put it this way too, for both the Air Force and the Navy. If you're one of the ground services, and I've been in both of them, the Army and the Marine Corps, you are actually always fighting for your job. Uh, as a Green Beret, you're fighting so that the Rangers don't come and take your job. Uh, as a tier above that, you're fighting so Green Berets don't come and take your job. Uh, the Marine Corps was the same way. You had, uh, you know, tiers from the infantry to scout snipers to recon battalion to force recon. And we're always fighting each other, jockeying for position like, oh, you fucked up. Ah, I'm going to take your job, bitch. So there's always this, you know, competition that goes along with it. In the Navy or the Air Force, like, there's nobody else that can do that job. Fucking nobody. I mean, like, absolutely not. Uh, there's not even anybody that's even close. So you just feed all of your money into that one thing and, you know, produces a good result. Yeah, it makes sense, right? Because also, uh, to your point earlier, it's like some of these guys are flying. And I, I guess I'm curious with, like, drones, like, d- it, does that kind of change the game with AI and drones? Do I even need to train oh, these yeah. dudes to fly jets? That's a damn good question, isn't it? <laughs> like, you start thinking about it, you're like, you're like, really? <laughs> It is all fun and games though, until somebody hacks your army of fucking F-15s. Like, like, now, now you've got a problem. <laughs> now you've got a very serious problem. Probably good to I keep know. a couple of those in reserve with like a dude flying them. But no, you have a point. Yeah, it's well, it's just interesting. Like, like we've we've uh, like back in the day, you start looking at like fighter pilots from like World War II. Dude, that no yeah. that shit, or even all like Viet- Vietnam cowboys. Or, dude, great! Like, dude, like President Bush. Was he was a fighter pilot in World War Two, right? Yeah. Like most people yeah. Don't, most people don't know that, dude. That guy, like, like he dude, got shot JFK, down. He got shot down, right, dude? dude what's, just, what, what about what about a, a freaking um, McCain? What, he he, how did he get captured? Oh shit! Uh, he he didn't remember. get shot down. I think he was in, like in the shit, right? Like out, he was in the jungle, like in no, no, no. He was a he was a pilot too. I'm pretty sure. Uh, let's let's look that up. Yeah, let's, let's I, look I think that. you're yeah, right. I, don't I know. think he got shot down. I think you're right. Yeah. Uh, JFK was he had like a a boat that got captured, right? He got and, sunk. And he, he got run over by a fucking Japanese destroyer. I was just reading about this yeah. the other day. Yeah, yeah. And Dude. then he swam out like saved his crew and all this crazy shit. Yeah. And now we got guys like Trump and Biden who are complete pussies. <laughs> 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 fucking bone spurs and this other retard. Like, yeah, yeah. God, God damn it, man, come on. Uh, right. I mean, I mean, I mean, uh, dude, the fact that 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 Trump was talking shit on McCain getting captured, and oh. he didn't, lo- and he didn't lose that second 
right then i was like oh, oh fuck i was like i was like our country's fucked up man that was fucking yeah that was uh, that was not a good move that was, Dude, it, that you know, was like, not, I, I was like what like as a, just a patriot i'm like yeah yeah as right. a naval aviator um mccain flew attack air- aircraft carriers um yeah flew attack aircraft from carriers during the vietnam war he yeah. narrowly escaped okay. death in the 1967 Forrestal fire on his 23rd bombing mission. The guy didn't have 22. He had 23 bombing missions. Holy he was shot shit. over down over Hanoi and badly injured. Dude, the guy had 23 bombing missions and and he got shit talked down on him when he ran for president. Like, come on. That's crazy. But these are the guys that were these are the guys that were like running our country. Like, that's the type yeah. of shit they were doing, right? Yeah. Like, yep. like we don't that's just uh, I mean, look, it's a different world today. And but that's that was like there was a you got to give respect to that as far as I'm concerned. To a degree, yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of political shit McCain did that I didn't like. I mean, you can't talk shit on the guy for having to you know fucking shoulders ripped out of sock at the Hanoi Hilton. Like you just can't. Like no, no, no. Yeah, listen. Like like you know, no one's gonna be perfect, especially if you do a life of like service, like like political service. Like you know, like it's easy. I'm not even talking about that. I'm just talking about the character of a human to go do that. You know, like that's right. Like because dude, these guys would go do that basically flipping a coin i'm assuming that they're not going to come back they're right. like they're like yeah i'm probably not coming back like oh man maybe I, hopefully then, i like, do a lot of pilots died yeah uh vietnam korea both and, 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 like you said back to world war ii man that was the more dangerous fucking job than like anything on the ground yeah man it's a they don't make them like that anymore um so so you, you joined um the marines and then how quickly were you like oh i'm going special forces did you know that before you even went in no, well, oh yes, yes, yeah, I did. That was my whole goal, and this goes back to like the the war thing, the early '90s too. Like you had a much higher chance if you were in some kind of special operations thing and you know seeing some action than you did as like a you know a regular conventional force. Uh, it's just kind of the way things used or the, typically always went before, you know, in the late probably the '70s all the way through the '90s, with some limited exceptions, you had a much higher chance of getting to go do something cool if you were a spec ops guy of some flavor. Now there were exceptions to that. You know, there were a lot of grunts involved in Panama. There were, uh, you know, 82nd Ranger Battalion both jumped into the <laughs> airfield there. There were grunts definitely involved in like Grenada, but your odds were better like the higher up the food chain you went. And so before you actually joined like the recon, were you? Um... Had you seen any firefights or anything like that? No, fuck no, fuck no. What was your job? What was your job before you before you joined Special Forces? Uh, so I was an infantryman to start with. I uh, actually went to Panama, and then uh, you know we're talking the in not for the war, but like the end of the nineties when we were getting ready to give it uh, back to the Panamanians, and I uh, you know patrol around the jungle for like three months, keeping this is I mean this is a fucking real like you know that t- that era war story. <laughs> Keeping uh, the Panamanians from coming on base and stripping the wire out of the buildings long enough for us to get all the Air Force's bullshit off the airfield and leave, which was like a you know three four month job. So, so, so yeah, so 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 you were like the yeah you were like the worker bees, right? Yeah, basically. we were like basically like rent a cops, you know, with you know yeah. like a, a magazine for our fucking M six because it was there was no we were doing fucking combat down there. No, these are like uh, poor, poor, pe- poor people trying to steal your wife. Right, right. Yeah, yeah like take this yeah. stick. If things get really out of control, like I don't know, shoot a flurry, you know, some bullshit. Uh, right. You know, so, so yeah. And how how uh, how long how long did you have that job for before you leveled up to special forces? Uh, let me think. I think I was in the infantry for about eight months. Okay. Yeah, so I mean, actually, too- right after that, right after that first trip to Panama, I took my, I went to selection and got picked up and uh, and left. So you knew pretty quickly. You're like, dude, I'm gonna love. I'm like, I'm going up there, wherever there is. Yes, I'm going up there. Yes. Like the first it's chance a- I get, the first time I get to take a shot at the title belt, I'm gonna, <clears throat> I'm gonna go, go try it. And how old were you? You were 18. Uh, let's see. I would have been. I would have turned 19 in Panama, so I would be like, you know, 19 in a couple of months. And so when, when so when you join, uh, how long is is the uh, training for reconnaissance for Marines? Uh, it was actually not that long back then. It was like a, a month of uh of like you know selectiony kind of type bullshit and it wasn't even really like a selection it was more like a hang out at the area waiting your school date and you know get fucked with by the other people and then school was like three months long and how and compared to like boot camp or compared to other special and obviously we're going to talk about your because you did a, a pretty large stint in special forces how was that school how was that school how was that training how, i mean what percentage of people make it through 
to, oh, to graduate. Oh Christ! Back then it was fucking. You had to guess, if you had to guess, ah, uh, goddamn man, it was uh, it was awful back then. Probably ten percent. Wow! I mean, so ninety percent, ninety percent of people dropped out. Failure rate. Yeah, it was it was fucking wild back then. Compare anyone that's read like Dave Goggins can't hurt me. That they're going to have a sense of like you know Navy SEALs right. buds. Is it, how's it compared to that? Is it similar? Is it different? Like it's give a, us a, give us a sense. The uh, amphibious reconnaissance school is actually very similar. In fact, the the West Coast amphibious reconnaissance school is also on Coronado Island, uh, same place as Buds is. But yeah, it's the same kind of shit. You know, carry the boat around, roll around in the sand. You know, don't eat, don't sleep, do fucking crazy physical shit. Uh, you know, run to these like. That's the only time in my life that they have pushed me so hard physically that. Uh, I remember running and I was like, I wish I could just fall down and die because I won't quit, but I'm in so much fucking pain that I wish that like my fucking heart would explode so I could be out of this with honor. Uh, I mean, it was brutal. It was fucking awful. Uh, yeah, it's one of those things like people think you're going to leave all jacked and shit. No, I left like, look like a fucking Ethiopian. It, it, um, like, yeah, emaciated. Right. Just, just well, dude, you're destroyed. burning like 10,000 calories a day. Oh, right. Yeah. Just, right, you know, right. scraped up and fucking <laughs> scarred up. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was ugly. It was, uh, it was extremely How, tough. Did they do anything where they, where you like sleep, sleep deprivation or hell weeks or anything like that? Yeah. We have a very similar thing to hell week. We call it patrol week. Uh, mine was 10 days long and it was, uh, the, you know, the same bullshit, like, uh, very little food. Uh, it, amphibious patrol, or excuse me. Amphibious reconnaissance at schools, patrol week is kind of like a mashup of a buzz and ranger school. So it was like, you know, very little food, uh, very little sleep. Think, you know, slept like two hours every five days or some shit like that. And those were spread out. And uh, just going on like mission after mission after mission of this like crazy go fucking seize the objective out in the middle of the goddamn swamp kind of kind of weird shit. And uh, yeah, it was brutal. I mean, it was absolutely fucking brutal. And, and so, so w when you finally did, did you get used to it at all? Was there a point where you're like, I got this or was there like, or, or was it like, no, I basically, I like, like basically just like, it was like going through hell one step at a time. And then you finally, you graduate. Oh no, dude, especially when guys start dropping off your patrol and that's where you lose a, a huge percentage of that 90%. There, there comes a day for me, it was about day six where it's like, these motherfuckers can't hurt me. Like, like you, you could tell me to stick broken glass and fire ants at my pee hole right now. I don't give a fuck. Like I'm, I'm beyond pain. Oh, yeah, you so, a, so 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 the first six days is when people are dropping like flies. They're like, "Oh shit, I got three months of this. No way." And, for me, and and, yeah. and, well, this and, is and the first the, six days of uh, patrol week, which is in the middle. This is in the middle. Oh, of school. oh, this is like oh, the okay. big so, event. Yeah. So you're six weeks in. Yeah. And 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 you got patrol week, which is like the that's essentially like, your, hell, like week. Yeah, hell week. Yeah. Is Army Ranger School? Do they do red flag day? Is it red flag weeks? Is that what it's called? Are you familiar with this? Uh, I don't know about Red Flag Week because I, I am not Ranger qualified, but uh, I will say this. Uh, Army Ranger School is is quite possibly, at least back then when you didn't eat too, the toughest thing in the fucking DOD. Because I had friends. Yeah, don't they, they, they combine all of them, right, for that one? Uh, Ranger School is very much, it's it's also like a junior leadership school. Mostly their, their claim to fame is you don't eat and you don't sleep for like three months. Really? And, uh, really? Really. Yeah, no, dude, they fuck those guys up. Uh, and Dude, so, so my, my, my wife's cousin is married to a, he went to, um, I think he went to West Point and then he yeah. ended up, and now he works for yeah. like ghost kitchens for like Travis Kalanick yeah. and the former Uber, Uber CEO, but he's young dude. He's like probably like 32 yeah. and he's a, yeah. he's a ranger. Oh yeah. Uh, he's, he's a, he's great. an Intel guy. He's an intelligence yeah. guy though. Yeah. Um, so he did all that. He had to do all that crazy shit. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah. Ranger school is a tough motherfucker. Uh, and I, you know, I say that not having been to Ranger School only because Recon Marines, that's famously one of the schools that you go to as Rangers. That's a, in fact, it used to be a requirement to be a team leader. You had to also be a Ranger School graduate. And uh, dudes would come back from there and be like, you know, our shit's harder in like X, Y, and Z area, but their shit is fucking mean on some of these other ones. And uh, I mean, Ranger School is, is actually very arguably the toughest thing in the, uh, the DOD. So when I, I was, the reason I asked is when I was 16 years old, I, I I was a wrestler in high school and, and I wrestled one year in college and um and there was a wrestling camp in yeah. uh Minnesota put on at the University of Minnesota called Jay Robinson's intensive wrestling camp. Now Jay Robinson was a was an Olympic he was Olympian from like nineteen sixty eight or something like that. 
but he was a, a he was a, a ranger from Vietnam. He he, oh, he was an army oh, army shit. ranger and served in Vietnam. Oh, damn. and he was an Olympic wrestler and he was an NCAA champion. And Holy so this guy shit. was was a like the fucking like gnarly gnarly <laughs> hardcore like animal. And he ended up uh, turning University of Mich- Minnesota, excuse me, not Michigan, University of Minnesota into like the number one wrestling NCAA wrestling program in the whole country. Um, this is before he had done that, though. And so I was 16. I went to that wrestling camp, and it was a one-month camp, one month long. Holy and he shit. And mod- he modeled it after Ranger School. Oh, no shit. Holy which shit. I didn't know, I, I didn't know what shit. any of that meant. I didn't know what any of that meant, right? Yeah, like, I was just some, like, 16-year-old kid from – So I was, like, this doughy, soft kid from SoCal <laughs> that, that went to the mid- Midwest for a month and got tortured – and literally tortured us for a month. Like – yeah. They'd wake. They we'd be sleeping and be like three o'clock in the morning. They'd pound on our doors, wake us up, make us go run sprints for two hours, go back to yep. bed. Dude, like that yep. was like, and that was that. That didn't count as a workout. That was just to fuck with us. Oh yeah, it was, yeah, it was just for yeah, for fun. Yeah. I was just like, why not? And then on every <laughs> every the reason I asked about the re, the red flag thing was every fifth day was a red flag day, which basically meant the coaches would torture us for the entire day. And what oh, I mean, torture. Awesome. Yeah, like it was like all they tried to do is get you to quit the wrestling camp. So yeah. like a th- a third of the camp quit in the first week, right. and I remember I called my my mom up, and my be- my best friend who was my roommate. Now for- I went with a bunch of these like upper middle class white kids, like you know wealthy white kids from like you know SoCal Orange County, and um and actually they weren't white with that. Well, I don't even know why I said that. Most of them were. Um, <laughs> And so so, there was, they can't be. You got to be some kind of yeah, mix. Yeah, it's yeah it, it, it was pretty. It was pretty. Like I grew up in a pretty like white area. Like it was like upper middle class white kids. And so like they, they had not seen hardship. Is my point, right? <laughs> For the most part, like myself included. I'm half Middle Eastern, but like you know, dude, I had a pretty like you know like my dad maybe worked at a gas station when I was ten, which sucked. But like but I didn't have to like go bell hail. hail bell hay in the barn you know right, milk cows at three not, in the fucking morning yeah yeah i didn't have to do that right and 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 guess what about half of the wrestling camp did <laughs> <laughs> like like <laughs> and and so we get there man and i, I think there was eight kids from my high school and like three of them went home in the first two days they were like wow. i didn't I, they didn't realize what they signed up for and right. it was funny we sat there and jay's jay robinson's like we get there we're in the bleachers and he's like Look to your left and look to your right. He's like, half of you aren't going to make it. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> like, Christ. This is like crazy. This, with this within like five minutes of us getting there. And so I was like, uh, and, and you know, like, you, as you know, that like, you can't train for stuff like that, right? Like, there's no, no, there's no, there's no thing. You can't push yourself to pass the point of breaking and then continue to do that for like hours upon hours upon hours upon hours because like you'll just stop, right? Like somebody else has to do that to you. Right. Um, and so... And so, uh, anyway, long story short, um, about four days in, my roommate's like, hey, I'm leaving. I'm going home. I can't do this. And I call my mom up. Uh, my mom's an old Italian, you know, my mom's a full Italian lady. She's probably in her 40s then. And she's like, and now I, what I didn't tell you is I had to work at McDonald's for an entire, for like six months to save up half the money to go to this thing. Because my parents were like, you got to pay for half of it. Nice. It was like a two thousand dollar nice. camp. And I had to earn a thousand bucks. Now, a thousand bucks doesn't sound like a lot of money now, but this is thirty. I was sixteen. It was like thirty years ago. Yeah, it's fucking um, nineteen ninety six dollars. It's just a lot harder to come by, dude. That was like that was like a sixteen year old having to save up seven or eight grand now, right? And, right. And so, and I was getting paid four twenty five an hour <laughs> working at McDonald's. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, right. dude. It, it and and that jo- that job arguably was about as bad as the camp. Working at the grill at McDonald's sucked. Oh, dude, uh, it's brutal. Yeah. Have you ever done that job before? I'm I'm a Taco Bell man myself, but yeah, it's it, fast food is actually really diff. It's uh, it's a fucking hard brutal. job. Like, it's painful. Dude, yeah. Staying dude, on you're on your and feet shit all day. Yeah. You, you, yeah, yeah. Do your back hurts? Yeah. Like exactly. my lower back hurt. I was like an athlete, and my back would hurt. I started having yeah. like a psychosomatic reaction where my back would hurt the minute I walked into McDonald's. Oh, um, the only good part was you got to eat as much food as you wanted. Did you right. guys get that to talk about? Which for a 16 year old so wrestler would, is awesome. Like, ah. Yeah, dude, it's <laughs> like a hundred, a hundred McNuggets and three Big Macs and like two milkshakes and four fries. Like that, that's literally what I would eat for lunch. Um, and my friends, but my friends would come in and fuck the whole place up and I had to clean it up. Um, so my mom, God bless her. was like, I, I, you know, I've already dropped one P mom on the show today. She basically said, don't be a pussy. 
And she said, if you, if you come home, you're paying for the entire camp. And so I was like, that's my dude, my mom, my mom motherfucked me so hard. It's so awesome. That's and I fantastic. looked at my buddy. And so right then, I'm, this is day four. And I was like, I got 20. It was 28 days. I'm like, I got 24 more days of this shit. And I'm like, yeah. I can't. It was, I think it was day three. I had 25 more days. I'm like, I don't know how the fuck I'm going to do this. This is <laughs> this sucks. And I just looked at my buddy and I was like, dude, bro, you can't leave. And he's like, his dad's like, look, just give it to the end of the week. And he, had, you know, he's. He was actually a pretty tough guy. He just like was like so- sixteen and soft and like hadn't yeah. been through something like that before. Dude, by the day seven, like he stuck. He ended up sticking it through. But dude, uh, that was the closest I've ever. I, I wrestled in college, Division One. It was nothing compared to this camp. Nothing compared to this fucking psycho's fucking Ranger wrestling. Dude, camp. it was nothing. It was it was easy. It was easy. Like I I went and wrestled like literally like Pac tens D one and I was like and it was like yeah you had to like kind of train on your own and like coaches didn't the coaches like you got to push yourself we're not gonna push you. You know, um, but yeah, it was modeled after Army Ranger School. So I'm like, I was like, I didn't know if there was a, every fifth day, though, dude, we were in the indoor football facility at University of Minnesota. So indoor football facility is 100 yards plus end zones. Yeah. And there's walls behind the end zones. And they right. had and, and and so they would say hit the wall, which was like right. basically meant whatever you were doing, you had to get up and sprint. 120 fucking yards, hit the wall and turn around and sprint back. And if oh, they saw fuck. us. And if they saw us even like doing once, if they saw one guy coasting, they'd say they'd be like, "Line up!" And we'd hit the wall for an hour. It was an hour of hitting the wall. Oh Jesus! And they 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 would do baby. I'm telling you, shit. You probably did way worse shit. We had to do baby carries, buddy carries, like for hour. It was like hours of this. It was just like it was. You just throw up and like and they'd be right. Keep going. Yeah. (laughs) Didn't care. To throw yeah. up, get, go hit. You throw up. They say hit the wall. Like you throw up some more. They're like go hit the wall some more. <laughs> These dudes and the, and if you and it wasn't like it, this were like technique practices would be like two hours of them torturing us. <laughs> so anyway, I, I that was the, I never did military, but that's a cl- that's the hardest I ever. I lost thirty. I ate whatever the hell I wanted. I lost thirty pounds in like four weeks. Fucking and I do, and I was like a sixteen year old dude. I, I I you know I was <laughs> you had thirty like, pounds to lose. So, I didn't have a lot of weight till I did. I lost thirty pounds. I came home and they're like, "What the fuck happened to you?" <laughs> so anyway, I, I digress. I, I I thought you might appreciate that story. No, that's awesome. Um, that is awesome. I didn't know so, something like that even existed. So, to be honest with you, that's fucking fantastic. Dude, though. dude, just Google Jay Robinson's intensive wrestling camp. Now, the best part of the whole thing is that you get a T-shirt at the end that was black and yellow, right? Army Ranger colors. Yeah. And on this, and it says Jay Robinson's intensive, intensive wrestling camp. In the middle, it said, "I did it." And then on the sleeve, there was two camps. One was a 14-day camp and one was a 28-day camp. 28-day camps would say 28 days on the, on, right on the, on, the, on the arm cuff. So what I remember, when, like before I went, you go to wrestling tournaments and you see dudes wearing that shirt and you're like, oh, shit, that guy's a badass, right? <laughs> like, like, like everyone knew that was a really hard camp, but, but, no, right. but I'm like, you didn't actually really know until you went. Right. Like you just, but as you can imagine, it had a big reputation. Yeah, no, um, yeah, and so, dude, I wore that damn T-shirt like it was like I lost it. I'm so sad I lost that shirt. Aww. But I wore, I, I probably wore that shirt for like five years every day. Right, right. It's got <laughs> holes in it, fucking rags. Your mom oh. actually threw it away when you weren't looking. But yeah, right. No, no, it happened to it, man. I'm so bummed. I should have framed it. That was that was probably one of the cool hardest things I ever did in my life. Um, back to your hard things. I, I, I you know, and and by the way, we're 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 like fifty five minutes into the show. And like oh, we haven't even got started. This is like gonna be a three-hour show. Um, <laughs> why don't we go for fifteen more minutes? And then I, I'd, what I'd love to do, man, is have you come back and do another yeah. episode. If no, you're, if you're awesome, down for that, man. yeah, that'd be fucking fantastic. So, li- listeners, yeah, if you're down, listeners, I, we're just getting started. I knew this was gonna happen with Clay because he's he's got such an interesting background. And um, but yeah, let's let's go for fifteen more minutes, and then um, and then we're gonna we're gonna pre- hit the pause button, and we're gonna come back, and 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 we're actually gonna talk about the current state of the world <laughs> and some of the sh- the whole reason I asked him to be on the show. I'm like, yeah, hey, I want to talk to you about is- Israel and Hamas, you know? And then, and then here we are. We're talking about me, like shit my mom happens. called. Call, uh, shit yeah, my mom called me a bitch. I've seen a hundred McNuggets. Yeah, it's talking about me eating hundred McNuggets and puking water at uh, Jay Robinson's. So, um, so when you got there, so when you finally, you know, leveled up to to recon, when you made it through at the end, were you like, yeah. you're like halfway through, you're like, I got this thing. 
it sounds like the end yeah. was like you made you made it through like pretty you knew you're gonna make it through at that point is that correct i knew for me yes and it was this is actually a weird thing though because uh that's when that's when most of the the, the guys fall off most of the guys actually really? fucking solid yeah i mean the vast majority so the only thing left after that is the uh the wait, wait most of the guys fall off at the end or they fall off in the beginning no no, no they fall off in the middle or right there in the middle oh that, that, oh, that patrol week okay. thing that's the, that's the primary killer uh, so yeah, yeah, we started with like a six man team. There's like three of us left and shit. Like it's, it's bad. Um, how do people anyway, quit? Do they have to ring the, do they have to ring the bell? Like, like in buds, we didn't have one of those bell thingies. Uh, actually I saw one of the most horrible things that I've ever seen, uh, with a quitting, uh, usually with Rico, you said you quit and like, they just fucking shuffle you off. But, uh, one dude quit early. I, we were in Greece of all places. We actually flew to Greece in the middle of my uh, training because, there was some shit going on over there, and it was like a you know training exercise. But anyway, it required like the entire East Coast of the Marine Corps to go, so they took us too. Well, the terrible thing about that is once you get outside of the United States, like they can do shit to you that they could never, ever fucking get away with in the United States. Because if you die, well, I don't know. He died in Greece. Shit happens. Uh, anyway, so one of the dudes quit early, and uh, this was like you know, pretty early into the thing. And I'll never forget this, man. It was one of the most heartbreaking. They lined us up down this road and uh, had this dude walk down the middle. And as he walked past you, you turned your back to him. Because uh, he quit oh, on you. Wait, wait, like, he... Oh. wait, wait, wait. This, what, wait. this is in Greece? Yeah. Wait, yeah. wait, 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 wait. Sorry, you lost me. So you're training no. in Greece? Training in Greece, yeah. I, I'm at Amphibious Reconnaissance School, but they've moved us to Greece for this part. Uh, oh, this is part. Was, this is so sorry. This, this is part, is part of, of Yeah. Yeah, so you guys do part of the training. You're out of San Diego, uh, or you were well, you were I was in San Diego. Coast, I was an East Coast guy, so I would have been at. Uh, uh, I was at Camp Fort Bragg, Lejeune, actually. Yeah, no, no, Camp no, no, Lejeune. Oh, oh, in yeah. South Carolina. North okay, Carolina. So, so you're in. Oh, North Carolina. Excuse me. Um, yeah. So you were. So you were in the East Coast, and yeah. and they're like, "All right, guys, hop on the plane. We're going to Greece." Yeah. And and yes, the, and they change and 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 they're and they're like all right in Greece we can do whatever the fuck we want so we can be an asshole yes. bigger assholes essentially oh, yeah yeah we can fuck with you like way harder than we're here because if you die like no big deal like and so yeah. and so on did they tell you before they're like what was the guy's name do you remember his name no no I don't what would have, what would his title have been I'm gonna I'm gonna pretend I'm him for a second. Uh, like I don't corporal, know. corporal Lance, or Cor- Lance like, Corporal Lance Corporal we were mostly Lance, Lance Corporal Smith. It's not going to be making it home with us, boys. And then he get, and then he's, was it like, men, we turn our back on people that desert us. And then it was, it was how did, yeah, how did dude, you, it was you just like, it was just like that fucking scene from what's the old stupid Western where they rip the guy's stripes off and shit. It was just fucking yeah. like that. I was like, what the fuck is happening? And, uh, yeah, that was, that was wild. That was, that was uh, fucking and crazy. You like shit that I'm not going to let that happen to me. Yeah, I was like, fuck that, I'll die first. You gotta kill my ass. Like, fuck no. That's so crazy, man. And so and so um when you were in re- recon, how long were you recon before you I I, I know that it sounds like when you were in recon yeah. things changed and they ended up shutting the program down, right? Uh not exactly. So what happened was uh again, you know, we're not under SOCOM. Uh because the Marine Corps had excluded itself from SOCOM through some weird like legal maneuverings and shit, which mostly didn't matter through the nineties. Uh because there was nothing going on. Uh, and it you know, mostly didn't matter for the 80s either, because nobody there was no SOCOM until like 1986. And it was still being formed all those other bullshit. So basically what happened was there was like a decade passed, and uh, what we didn't notice as idiot Marines is that then our highest ranking officer is a lieutenant colonel. That's like recon, force recon's like the guy. He's a fucking 05. SOCOM has four-star generals, Three star generals, two star generals, one star generals, full bird colonels coming out of their ass, and then like you know, lieutenant colonels getting fucking coffee and shit. Like that's how you know common they are. So the uh, the war kicks off. You know, nine eleven happens. GY kicks off, and uh, all of a sudden, man, they're like, we're like, okay, time to go, and they're like, not you, motherfucker, and uh, we're like. What the fuck is going on here? So it was a it was an ugly fucking time, man, dude. I'd only been wait, wait. So point. so they would not let recon go to go to Middle East. Well, basically, they just didn't include them. They're like, fuck you, man. SOCOM's got this. Like a range of battalion, Green Berets, fucking Navy SEALs, fucking Air Force, whatever the fuck they're called. Like we got all this shit. Like 
We don't need you motherfuckers. And we're like, because, you know, I'm like a fucking sergeant at the time. I'm like, what just happened? And uh, it was ugly. So, so you know, there po- was, a, like a poli- was it a political move, basically? Kind of, but it was also, it was kind of like, a, yeah, like you excluded yourself from us. Well, guess who's got the big dick now? Marine Corps. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, totally political uh, yeah. move. Yeah. <laughs> as well as, you know, like, you know, I get it now in retrospect. Like, hey, they didn't want to fucking play ball with us. So, fuck you. You know, have a good time. So, there was some, you know, small league shit that happened early on. Uh, like, a, you know like one platoon went to like Afghanistan for like 20 minutes or, you know, some bullshit. But, uh, but basically the handwriting was on the wall. Like we were absolutely fucked. Uh, so we're like, Ooh, this isn't good. So I'm in the middle of my enlistment too. Like there's nothing you can do. Uh, yeah, I'm in like three years. Uh, so, you know, also we all got stop lost because like they couldn't recruit enough dudes to fight the war at the time. Uh, so yeah, we ended up going to the invasion of Iraq. So that was, that was actually kind of, in some ways, like the Marine Corps show, uh, Afghanistan was still going on, but they needed more guys for that. So we went to the, uh, the invasion, but you know, basically right after nine 11, when like, we basically got told to sit down and shut the fuck up. All of us started looking at like out, like, well, I made a fucking terrible mistake. I, uh, I paid a, a high fucking penalty for it, but, uh, where am I going to go after this? And that was actually the reason that uh, Marine Corps has SOCOM forces now. So many of us quit around like 2002, 2003. It was like 65% of all the recon Marines in the world just were like. Wait, can, you, can you do that? Can you quit? Yeah. Or don't you have, like, is it like, how's that work? Because you're enlisted, right? And you have at, like a, a contract. At the end of your contract. That's what I mean. So at the end of their contract. Got it. They, they like, I'm not life. re-upping. I'm yeah, out. not for you. I'm going to the fucking army. Uh, and. and, and that that had an effect because I mean they did they lost an asshole it was like sixty five percent like and if you're talking about a force of like you know five six hundred dudes if sixty five percent of them quit and leave and go to another service like you fucked up yeah uh, so, yeah totally totally you lost all your talent right. yeah so we did and that's uh, a big funny. investment too that's a huge investment oh, right they, they, yeah they millions they of dollars right uh, I went to I went to selection for special forces I saw recon marines I hadn't seen in years it was like a fucking reunion there was like twenty of us there I'm like hey what are you Bob, Steve, what the fuck are you doing here? <laughs> uh, you know, some dudes went to the Navy, uh, so went that route. And uh, basically that, that though forced the Marine Corps to like kind of bend the knee and say, okay, we'll have a SOCOM element. But it took them like three years to build it. I wasn't sticking around for that bullshit. Like, nah, dog, you, you lost me. And so, and so when you ended up going um, at this point, you ended up, this is when you joined the Green Berets. Talk, talk, yeah. t- tell us a yeah. little bit about that. Did you have to do, a, did you have to do a Green Beret school? How did that oh, work? Oh yeah. Oh fuck yeah. Yeah. Two years. Yeah. Wait, yeah. wait, wait, wait. Two. Well, how, so do they have the same? Like, is it the same thing as like again? You had what three months? You said of of school right. to 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 graduate into becoming a recon guy. You yeah. Had two years of Green Bay school. How much of it was where yeah. they weed you out though? Not very much. Uh, it's a. Uh, it's almost like a, the, an apples to oranges comparison. Uh, they, do you yeah. have to, do you actually have to have previous special forces experience to try out for green berets? No, no, you don't. Not at all. Uh, there was a time where you needed that. You had to have four years in, you had to be of the rank of Sergeant. So they kind of expected you to get, you know, tough in the fucking Ranger battalion or 82nd airborne or some bullshit like that. They had actually stopped that by the time I went, uh, because they needed bodies. They were taking guys straight off the street. Wow. Uh, yeah, so you had you started to go to selection, and a selection is their big deal, and they uh, they approach it in a totally different manner, which is it seems kind of fucking crazy, but it does work. Um, so selection is tough. Uh, there's you do some hard shit there, but it's a completely different mindset. There's not somebody like yelling at you to pick up the fucking boat and do this silly shit. Uh, they don't even talk to you. Uh, you're you get a number when you get there. And uh, like, okay, fucking roster number 142, here's your instructions. And uh, actually, most of the time, they don't even talk. They write instructions on a whiteboard. And you either succeed or fail. And they don't give a fuck which one. Like, What do you, what, what do you mean? It's like testing, essentially? Yeah. Uh, like, like, here's uh, a, here's, know, here's, give me an example. Place, uh, be at this place at this time with a rucksack that weighs 45 pounds. Uh, when you get there, read the other whiteboard. The whiteboard will say, move from this distance to this distance. Uh, you do not know the time standard and go. Go as fast as you can. 
Uh, so they're just seeing is this person can they follow like can they figure out how to do stuff that without a lot of it, 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 like intel. It's it's also like a lot more psychologically like with absolutely no feedback. Like a lot of people just I mean, tough tough motherfuckers like just physically cannot handle absolutely no feedback. They can handle me calling a you know tiny dick shit bag, uh, but they cannot handle nothing. Oh, and so interesting. They're it's like physically. Weird. Physically, we're not going to torture you. Mentally, we will. Yeah, completely. And they want like so a completely it's different, different shit game. too. Yeah, completely different game. Uh, you know, you'll sleep when you're told to sleep, which might be you know I don't know, fucking two in the morning to ten in the morning. I don't know to you know some kind of crazy shit like that. And they'll also ask for for weird shit that like I still don't understand to this day. And I will, you know, I was one for like ten years. Uh, you'll be in the middle of this shit, and they'll be like, uh, "Here's a piece of paper. Draw me a map of the United States." Like, what? And you fucking okay. do the best, and you know some other like crazy bullshit. And uh, you, and what they, did, they, and, what they and, and if you didn't do a good enough job, they're like, "All right, you're out." I have no idea, no fucking idea. Oh, oh it's, it's... <laughs> like never saw it again. Like I have no, even now, but, but, even now but you, I don't know. But did you see people get kicked out of it? You just saw people not be there anymore. <laughs> even the, the, dude so this is just mind fuck that, that, that's it they were just yeah. they're like we're just guys gonna would, mind fuck guys would either quit or uh what would happen sometimes they would be like these numbers here go to this place these numbers here go to this place and these numbers here. and what you think or what i think happened is like one of those sets of numbers just got told to get on a truck like you're not good enough man. you're later. not here anymore you're yeah, not good bye. enough Return to your unit. Oh, so interesting. So, so, and that lasted for how long before, like, you got to a point where that's, it was a little bit less that's ridiculous? A known, that's a known thing. That's, uh, I think it was 35 days back then. So, 35 days. And then once you get through the 35 days, you're like, all right, men, congratulations. You're on to the next part. Yes. Now, which was like go... them, them training you to do real, right. real work, not, not fucking with you. Yeah. Pretty much. They're yeah. like, who do we want to invest in, essentially? They're like, who, who uh, yes, can deal with very all this uncertainty and lack of information? And Yeah, and they're, they're heavily invested in, like, psychologists on staff, too. You do all kinds of weird – you take all these weird, you know, tests. Like, I took, like, every IQ and personality test that there is, like, in a row, probably some of them twice. I mean, and I have no fucking idea what the, any of that shit means because you never see any of it. Even once, you, oh, even once you're done, they're like, okay – you, uh, you made it, man. Fucking get the fuck out of here and report to your next place. You're like, you're like, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very weird. Oh my god. You know, um, I, I I'm gonna end on. We're we're, we're out of time, and and this I I knew it. I scheduled an hour and a half, and I was like, and then we pushed <laughs> off the show, and we went for an hour and ten. But we, uh, what I'll do is I'm gonna schedule a time, maybe over the hall. Are you around over the holidays? Yeah, I'm home for the next. Uh, I'm home. Yeah, most all of December and uh, through January, so I got plenty of time. Yeah, this is all right. When we get awesome. when we get off this is a light time for me. Yeah, when we get off air, we'll, we'll find another. We'll, we'll we'll grab another hour. Um, okay, if that works for you, you cool with that? Yeah, no, that's perfect, man. All right, be, 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 all right before we go, uh, it's funny because I think we got to this part of of your story like within ten minutes last time. <laughs> this time <laughs> took an hour. <laughs> uh, I'm like, we got here like way sooner last time. Um, but I had asked you last time, and uh, so I'm going to ask you right now. So, you know, in your entire career, and, and we're going to hear more about the, your career um, st- starting with, you know, once you made it through the Green Bray School and became a, a Green Bray, how many firefights have you been in? Man, I'd say like 100, like close to 100. Yeah. And, and the, the first one you ever had, was that in recon or was that in Green Bray's? Uh, that was actually in recon. And how many out of the hundred? How many would you say were with the Marines? How many were with with Army? Uh, like one. Actually, no. I take that back. That was friendly fire. That doesn't count. Uh, I got shot at by my own guys in the Marine Corps. Uh, so yeah, first, <laughs> yeah, yeah, which is odd, which is a lot less exciting because uh, they know how to shoot. Uh, oh. First, first, first real one was actually as a Green Beret. Oh shit! So so you, so yep. wait, wait 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 first real one or first wound? Did you say wound? No 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 no. A first real one. First real one. Oh, I thought you said real wound. I'm like, oh, shit. No, 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 no. No, I've never been hit. You can't get the kid. I'm fucking bulletproof. <laughs> shit. So first one was as a Green Beret. And yep. um, and last time I asked you this, and I was like, 100 gunfights. Yeah. How many rounds did you carry? Like, in a, like what was, like, average? Like, when you first started, like, how many rounds were you carrying around with you? Like, what was, like, Man. Like, what was, like a typical day in the, in, in the, in the, in the saddle? It, uh, it really depended, and it changed a lot depending on, like, 
what you were doing. And I did a lot of different things across my uh, my time. So, like, I started off as a, as a recce dude, spent, like, 13 rifle magazines, hand grenades, a bunch of pistol magazines and shit. Because uh, there were not very many of us, and we're out there, like, doing weird shit, trying to find things and hoping we don't get shot at. And if we do, we got to have a shitload of bullets because we're going to be deep, deep shit. Uh, the next place I was at was uh, was a, an SF team. So there were more of us as well as we had uh, uh, host nation forces with us. So I carried a lot less, carried like 80 then. And my last thing was when I was a counterterrorism assaulter, and we were doing very specialized uh, door kicking, you know, go kill this guy, not just anybody. Uh, so I carry like three, three magazines. Cause there's like a hundred of us too. Like there's like, you know, 60 of us and like 40 host nation guys are like, we'll fuck up anybody. Like whatever. Yeah. And, 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 and I, I remember last time you told me, you're like, you're like, yeah, like, like first time you can kind of tell who's new by how much they're carrying. Is you that, is that is it, yeah. You, it's, it's a, it's a human nature to just carry like all this bullshit. You don't know what the fuck's going to happen. And then after you've like been in, you start just throwing shit away. Like, I don't need that. Fuck, I've never, I've been here for six months. I've never used that. You start Delete. slowing down. Yeah. And next thing you know, you look like actually, ironically enough, like the uh, World War II soldiers going to, going ashore in like Iwo Jima. I got like a bandolier of bullets, uh, you know, pack of smokes, fucking little tiny bedroll. Like, that's it. I don't give a fuck about anything else. It, 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 you told me like it, you didn't want to t- like, give up room for your snacks. <laughs> exactly, guys. <laughs> fucking snacks. <laughs> You're like, oh man, I can't carry all these rounds. Like, where am I going to put my fruit roll ups? <laughs> I got to get water bottles and fruit snacks. Yeah, <laughs> I got my priorities, Darius. I don't need fucking four 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 hundred rounds. I only need thirty. <laughs> you ever tried I'm to be good. a gunfight with low blood sugar? It's bullshit, <laughs> right? Yeah, it's fucking <laughs> terrible. <laughs> Hey, quick question before we go. Did you guys share snacks at least? Or were you guys like pretty, did you like, was, was it, was it, was there, was, was, did people share their snacks during gunfights or was it like, no man, my snacks were my snacks. That's pretty good about sharing their snacks. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Hey man, you're looking pretty down. Do you have uh, have a little jerky, have a little dip Copenhagen. Let's get you back a hundred percent. I took that shit from like adulthood to second grade. Did you share your snacks? Yeah, man. Be be a good battle buddy. Share your snacks. Share your snacks. Oh, man. Clay, so next time, let's talk. We'll, we'll talk Green Braves. We'll talk about the book. We'll talk about the state of the current world and then some. How's that, does that sound okay. good for you? That sounds good to me, brother. Looking forward and to we'll it. Do, we'll do great. All right, man. You guys, thank you so much for listening. <laughs> I, it, you got me. <laughs> you get me whenever I talk to a good one, and Clay's a good one. So uh, looking forward <laughs> to, uh, to part two of Clay Martin. Until uh, next time, peace out, everybody. Love you. You are listening to The Greatness Machine, and that's a wrap for today. Listen, if you love what you heard, subscribe to the show on whatever podcast platform that you're tuning in on so that you don't miss any of our future episodes. We have tons of great people coming on, and we're we're stoked to have you here to enjoy it with us. Leave us a review. Tell us what you love most about this particular episode. We love getting the reviews. We love to see what you guys love most. And if this particular episode, you know, made you think of someone who's leveling up in their business and in their life, print screen, share it with them. Leaders are the best givers. And after all, we're all here to support and grow with each other. And in case you want to see some of the fun behind the scenes shots or some of the things that we're doing, I'm actually writing about this in my weekly newsletter. Go to www.therealdarius.com and subscribe to my newsletter. We're talking about fun things like business and life and mindfulness and cryptocurrencies and gosh, I don't even know everything and anything, but it's tons of fun stuff I write about. I try to get it out on a weekly basis. You can subscribe at www.therealdarius.com. And with that said, look, thank you guys so much. I appreciate you. I love you. Peace. We're out of here. See you guys on the next one. Uh-huh. She's my lover.